Hello, YouTube. Uh, okay, so it's uh, Roach's cooking channel. Received a couple of comments that sort of said, you do know your channel's turned into a cooking channel. And um, I uh, have to put my hands up and say, um, yeah. But you've got to look a little bit harder as to what's going on. So, um, yeah, there's normally a bit of cooking. And um, the lead up to that is um, something that people just got to kind of read between the lines about. So, um, my little channel, my videos are made with me normally traveling somewhere. So, you have to have a vehicle to do that in and that vehicle has to be maintained. So, there's a certain amount of admin and preparation that has to go into just getting wherever you're going. <laughs> when I get there, what I'm doing is the easiest way to practice being self-reliant, the easiest way to practice um, living off grid. So no gas, no electricity, no running water. These kind of amenities that we take in the 21st century uh, for granted. Uh, I haven't got any of those so recently I've, I've installed gas into the truck but I still light a fire today I'm going to cook on an open fire and very simply being out uh, camping independently off-grid is prepping it's about learning the skills that you need to provide for your family and the greatest thing you'll have to provide for your family is is a hot meal and clean, safe drinking water, you know. Um, so the basis of it is, I always tend to light a fire, but that's me practicing the skill of being able to light a fire, being able to light a viable fire in all seasons. You know, you'll see me light fires when there's snow on the ground. You'll see me light fires when it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, sometimes I'll use natural tinders. Sometimes I'll use a flint and steel. Sometimes I'll use a lighter, you know. But that's me just practicing the skill of being able to light a fire any time of the year, anywhere. Then you go on to fire prep, you know, so once you've lit your fire, if you don't prepare your, uh, all your different size, uh, kindling, you know, slightly bigger stuff, until you get up to stuff as thick as your wrist, and then you've got a viable fire. Obviously a fire, you know, purifies your water, it cooks your food, it raises your morale, it maintains your body temperature, you know, so that, that's such a such an If we have a man-made disaster or a natural catastrophe, and they do happen here in the UK, you know, go back to 2011, we had 33,000 people flooded out of their homes, you know, that happened two weeks before Christmas. Well, on our TVs and on the news, the Royal Marines Commando and the Royal Family turned up on the 19th of February, and we're on national TV filling sandbags, but what did those people do on their own for six weeks? You know, six weeks, nobody came. You know, a few years ago, we had a storm blow through the Highlands in Scotland, the 80,000 people without electricity for a fortnight, for two weeks before they had electricity put back on. So, so what I'm doing is I'm practicing these skills in the field by just going camping, just going out and playing with the girls, just going out and kind of uh, sleeping under the stars, but I'm practicing being out of light a viable fire, purifying my own water, cooking a decent meal that I can put on the table for the family. So that is prepping. <laughs> and I appreciate that a few people out there just see me here doing a bit of cooking and think, well, you know, Roach's channel, just a cooking channel. And I'm trying to have a bit of fun with it as well, you know. Um, I have other people turn around to me and say, Roach, you're always eating. You just, you don't do anything else except eat, you know. So when I went out with Low Wolf the other day, we had breakfast at about nine o'clock and we had an evening meal about seven in the evening. <laughs> you know, but I didn't share every minute of the day, but everybody watching ate at least twice in that time frame. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, you know that's kind of where I've ended up but I am rehearsing and practicing skills in the field that if the electricity goes off at the house if the gas goes off if we um, have a period where we don't have running water and where I live we recently had a new water main put in the street 
and sure enough they turned the water off for several days in all the houses in the street you know and there were standpipes and there were emergency tankers and people bringing bottles of water around the house and if you need that that's all good but if you've got a plan and you don't you know we got the lifesaver jerry can out so we have five gallons of clean safe drinking water sitting on the side in the kitchen and we were, we were pretty pretty all right you know pretty fine we had we put the kettle on da 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 da, da. you know the family functioned as normal without mains water for the two or three days that they were digging up the water main in the, in the street right so these things do happen the way to practice these skills become proficient at them bring them home to the family because none of us are going to leave our homes unless we absolutely have to in this crazy world we live in you know bad things happen to good people and i think having a basis of these very simple skills how to light a fire how to purify your own water how to cook a decent meal without electricity without gas without running water i think are viable skills you know the other side of prepping is having a bit of food on the shelf you know a little bit of extra food so for me prepping isn't about buying food you know i know a lot of people that have trouble buying food to put on the table today let alone put stuff aside for tomorrow and they they say to me roach you, you're mad i mean where would i find extra money to 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 store medium to long-term storage of food well i haven't got it either you know i buy things when they're cheap so you know buy one get one free i put one in the larder i put one in the garage on the shelf you know if i've got five quid in my pocket and vegetable soup or whatever oxtail soup or whatever it is in the supermarket is cheap you know i'll spend my five quid on eight ten tins of soup and i'll bring them over and put them on the shelf because a tin of soup is the basis of a really good stew a few dumplings a few tomato to, uh, potatoes in there you got a, a hearty meal you can put on the table for the family and mate you ain't got a problem in the world and that's how i got three months dehydrated and dried foods in the house it for me it wasn't about spending money i didn't have on things i didn't need you know things came along at the right money and i picked them up for me prepping's always been about saving money <laughs> you know my wife is brilliant i'm sure a lot of the girls out there that run the house do a, do a do an incredible job i don't think any of us blokes could have come close my prepping really just helps that position along you know sometimes my wife will say to me i've got to pop out and buy some uh, cooking oil or vegetable oil or whatever it is and i'll say baby go in the garage and just just get a tin off the shelf you know and as she will she'll bring it in the house put it in the larder and we're away and the next time it's cheap or the next time i've got a couple of quid or the next time i see something then i'll pick it up and replace it and 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 that's all that's going on so this is prepping this is me rehearsing providing for my family cooking a hearty meal off grid bringing the skills that i practice in the field home so that if anything happens at home if the gas the electricity the water goes off we still function normally as a family right sorry if that was a bit of a rant <laughs> um, my wife is cooking a beautiful dinner so I said, you know what, I'm going to go out in the garden, have a bit of fun, and I'm going to do a dessert. So today, what I'm going to do for you is I am going to cook, wait for it, a peach cobbler. I've got a subscriber out there who uh, sends me a message once a week. Going, when are you going to cook, when are you going to cook another peach cobbler? <laughs> so, so purely for him, this is for you, mate. You know who you are. Uh, peach cobbler and we're going to have it for dessert it's a bit windy here today right so what i've done is i've dug a dakota fire pit so for anybody that doesn't know what one of those is very simply it's a method of cooking underground and if you cook underground it means the wind doesn't affect your fire so the fire is going to be lit uh, in a hole in the ground once we've got some good embers and all the rest of it we're going to cook it in the old uh, camp oven the way we always do uh, I'll knock up some really simple ingredients and you can come and have a look and if anyone out there fancies knocking one up for the family it's a doddle and they'll love it so come with me let's get this done
Okay, so there's our ingredients. We've got self-raising flour, we've got uh, sugar, a couple of eggs. I'm going to use half a packet of uh, unsalted butter and a couple of tins of uh, peach slices. Uh, I'm also going to use a can of lemonade or cream soda and that will just give the cake mix a little bit more of a zing. The other thing that I like about it is it's completely self-contained. It goes in the fridge in the truck nice and, you know, nice and neatly. So uh, I kind of use a can to bake whatever it is, you know. So um, all about solutions. There you go. I don't know if you can see that, but what I tend to do is just to put my kindling in a tree. So I just sort of wrap it up into bundles. I'll show you. Basically, just sort of pick it up, bundles like this, put it in the tree, and of course the air gets through it. What tends to happen is that over time it's uh, it's just dry, you know, so next time you need any. One of the first things that I do when I get out in the ground and I kind of establish a little camp is I get my kind of kindling together for, you know, a couple of days that I'm going to be there, uh, and I just put it in a tree, just reach up put a bundle in a tree and that's tomorrow's fire starter that's the next day's fire starter but the wind is whipping through it it dries it out and it is a lovely little trick okay so very simply a Dakota fire pit is just um, two holes normally a foot square a foot deep and a foot apart now what we've got to do is dig a little tunnel to join the two holes together at the bottom you can use a digging stick what I'm going to use is I'm going to use uh, an empty tin can Okay, so you don't necessarily have to uh, sharpen a digging stick, but um, it um, just makes it a bit easier. All it is is a stick that's uh, wider than the grip of your hand with a point on both ends. And you use it for digging. It doesn't have to be a work of art. Just has to be a sharp stick. Sorted. Okay, so a Dakota fire pit. All I'm going to do is use a tin can, scoop the mud, scoop the earth out. Basic tools. If you, when you dig the holes, put the spoil to one side. I think uh, this came from um, American Indians and the idea really is that if you have to uh, bug out camp you know if the bad guys come in the middle of the night or during the day or whatever you know you hear intruders all they would do is just scoop this into the hole and go so the holes are normally square normally a foot square normally a foot deep and 12 inches apart and then what we're going to start to do with our digging stick is we're going to tunnel through from one one hole to the other. Talk about making yourself comfortable. You right there, Hogue? Digging stick, differing lengths. You know, you could, if you were doing something above ground, you might choose quite a bit, quite a long one. But uh, I just wanted quite a short one to get it in and out of the hole. Just put your spoil to the side of the fire. This is like I say, all you're going to do then when you've got to fill it in, just kick it in. Okay, that's us finished. Try to uh, make the bottom nice and flat and don't make the hole between the two pits too small because otherwise one is your chimney and the other one is your fire pit so if you make the chimney pit too small you'll starve the fire of oxygen and there'll be nowhere for the smoke to go because it's below ground like I say very little very little sign very little smoke from a from a fire pit like this Okay, as we said, I'm going to line the bottom of the fire just like we would if we were lighting a fire above ground. 
just keeps it off of the damp, cold earth. Gives your fire more chance of uh, actually catching. So just to speed things up, I'm using a bit of lint out of the uh, dryer and uh, a bit of Vaseline. Homemade fire lighters, people. And then on top of that goes one of my fire bundles. Let's see how it gets on. Just put that one on the top while I go and uh, get the rest of the kin there. So what I'm using here is my Chris Gain survival tool. It's my uh, favourite thing at the moment, but uh, as capable a cutting tool as you are ever going to find. Okay, so here we go. Uh, a couple of mugs full of uh, self-raising flour. A bit more, maybe. Yeah. Next thing's going in is uh, half a packet of butter. What we've got to do is just run that through our fingers until it's. Um, The heat of your hands will do this pretty quickly. Literally uh, just break it up in your fingers. And what we're after is a sort of breadcrumb type mix. And that's um, roughly what it'll look like. Uh, obviously just uh, make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> so you can see it's starting to uh, get a little bit more, like I say, like a sort of breadcrumb type effect. So we keep going with that for a little while. The heat of your hands is normally what does it. Just uh, run it through your fingers. You want to try and get rid of all the lumps otherwise uh, when it's all cooked you end up with uh, someone gets like a, you know, a big lump of uh, butter or sugar or whatever. Okay so that's that. Next thing we're going to put in is some sugar. Uh, that's probably, I mean, you can see the size of that little tin, I've put about half of it in. But just, uh, same again, just mix it up, run it through your fingers. Okay. A couple of people have asked me how you break an egg with one hand. I'm not actually sure, I've always done it for years, so one hand tap it on the edge and then what you're going to do is just pull the shell apart with your fingers and hopefully the egg and the yolk just fall out. Same again, just crack, hold it in your hand and then just pull the two pieces apart. A little bit of dexterity but uh, that's how you crack a, an egg with one hand. Basic sort of cake mix, you can use this mix for scones. Next thing I'm going to put in is, uh, um, I'm using lemonade, so these are just little bottles of lemonade. But I like to use a kind of Coke can type size uh, container. Uh, so just half at a time. You know, so like I say, the carbonated water just puts a little bit of air into whatever you're baking. It's a little bit of a trick. If it is a bit too wet, <coughs> you can always just um, put a little bit more flour in it. So this is the trick with the flour I was telling you about. 
a bit of dry flour and everything will just mix will just slide off your hands. I remember once I cooked it in the woods and we had sort of double cream and everything, you know. <laughs> and, uh, people would kind of walk out the woods, uh, come and say hello sort of thing in the evening, have a walk around and meet everybody, chat before everyone sort of beds down for the night. And they'd kind of walk over to Roaches and Funky's camp and get a super duper dessert. <laughs> which was uh, quite funny in itself. I don't know if anyone sort of notices, but I am a uh, mucky pup when I'm cooking. You know, I'll get flour and everything all over me. It's the same when I'm, you know, kind of out in the field. I don't think twice about sort of, you know, kneeling down on the wet or damp ground. The next thing you know, your sort of knees are, uh, you know, a bit wet. But uh, I kind of look upon that really as part of parcel of the experience I like to go home with the, the ground and the earth sort of under my fingernails you know it kind of reminds me of good old-fashioned infantry soldiering uh, you know sort of your connection with the earth sort of thing right I think that kind of ladies and gentlemen is Somewhere where we need to be. Right, let's get the uh, camp oven, get a bit of flour in that, and let's put this thing together. Okay, so we put that to one side for a second. Got the camp oven. Boom! A little bit of flour in the bottom just to. Uh, Try to make sure that, uh, I'd say it doesn't stick or, or uh, kind of burn. So we're going to take our dough and put it in the camp oven. Just going to press it down with my fingers. This is where we are going to put our peaches in. Like I said, what we're going to do is sort of drain off the fluid. A lot of the juice, otherwise it will be uh, too wet. And that's what we're looking like. A tin of peaches on the top. I'm going to do the same again. I normally put a couple of tins in. So again, we're just going to drain off the fluid, that beautiful syrup. I <laughs> used to absolutely uh, love it. Sneak in the kitchen and have it when uh, no one was looking. Right. So there, ladies and gentlemen, is our uh, peach cobbler. I'm going to put the lid on. Fire's kind of, fire pit's dying down. So we'll get some embers out the top, out the bottom, put it on the top. Uh, stoke it up so it's got plenty of fuel hopefully it'll have plenty of air and I reckon uh, about 35 minutes or so we'll have a peach cobbler just might have caught around the edge but um, <laughs> I think that's gonna be it <clears throat> peach cobbler everybody cooked in a Dakota fire pit let's get it dished up 